1988 was a banner year for Pirate pitchers. Case in point, on May 8th, Doug Drabeck took a no-hitter into the ninth inning against the Padres. One, two, pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. There are now two outs in the eighth inning. I didn't really start thinking about it until probably the eighth inning. Here's the two-strike pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. For the third out, it was uh, Sean Adler. The fans started cheering and it hit me there, and then I didn't try not to think about it in the dugout. I tried talking to people like Mike Dunn and John Smiley were sitting next to me. I talked to them a little just to keep it off my mind. And then when I went out for the ninth inning, I knew that here's a chance. Here's the pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Enrique diving stop. His throw to first base not in time. He throws the ball over the head of Sid Bream. It'll be a base hit for Randy Reddy, and that breaks up the no-hitter. But Doug Drabeck with a no-hitter through eight innings here this afternoon, and he'll get a standing ovation. It was exciting. It didn't happen, but, uh, you know, who knows in the future. The future sure looks bright for Doug Drabeck who won 10 of his last 12 decisions and led the staff with a career-high 15 wins. Winning came easy early in the season for Brian Fisher, who won his first four decisions. But a shoulder injury would soon force him onto the disabled list. My shoulder has bothered me since the middle of May. And, um, I feel strong one time and I feel weak the next time. And I know I would have been more of a contributor to the team. And it was real disappointing. Despite hurting, Fisher came back and contributed some strong performances out of the bullpen. In 11 relief appearances, he was 2-0 with a 0 0.78 ERA. Well, he'll get a lot of high fives for the way he pitched tonight. After his spectacular rookie season, Mike Dunn's sophomore year proved to be frustrating. Dunn's an excellent pitcher, and uh, maybe there was something for him for the sophomore jinx, I don't know, but uh, we have big plans for him, we like him a lot. Dunn also spent nearly a month on the DL early in the season. Making big strides on the mound was 31-year-old Bob Walk, who put together his best season ever. Walk showed great command of his pitches, but it wasn't always that way. Uh, I saw Bob Walk uh, years ago in the minor leagues when I managed the AAA when he was pitching for Oklahoma City. I think the comparison is, is, is night and day. Bob Walk was a... Uh, big, strong kid that could throw a ball through a wall, and sometimes that's where he threw it. But Walk refined his skills under the guidance of pitching coach Ray Miller. For the first time in life, Bob Walk stopped trying to throw every pitch so that the hitter could not make contact. Uh, once that happens, you become a pitcher, and it's really been helpful to him and helpful to me. And helpful to the Buckos. Walk won 12 games and earned himself a spot on the National League All-Star team. He's a professional. He knows what it's all about. He's a tough competitor and uh, definitely an asset for a ball club. Fireballing John Smiley was also proving valuable to the Bucks. Well, that's right there. Hey, boy, Don. Hey, 2-0, -oh, you let up and hit the outside corner because you had to throw a strike. But that last pitch was about that much quicker with no effort. And then just a little bit extra right on the end. A little bit extra right on the end. Oh, boy. In only his first year as a starter, Smiley won 13 games and quickly became one of the league's dominant left-handers. John already had an overpowering fastball, but his key to success was the development of a changeup and a curveball, which helped keep hitters guessing wrong. Swing and a miss, strike three. John Smiley had some very impressive outings. He won at the Montreal Expos on June 3rd and threw a two-hit shutout against St. Louis on September 21st. While John may seem quiet and reserved, once he takes the mound, he turns into one of the game's most fierce competitors. Hit him and now Brooks charges the mound. Smiley drops his glove and says, come on, and they're going at it. John Smiley and Juve Brooks going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But Smiley preferred strikeouts to knockouts, leading the team in K's with 129. And as was the case with all pitchers, Ray Miller played a key role in John's success. Down in the strike zone right here, in and out, change speeds, give me a ground ball. Take one hit at a time from here on out. Just one hit at a time, don't worry about the base running because we'll get you some more. Okay, let's go. Miller's pitching philosophy is simple. Work fast, throw strikes, and change speeds. He also believes that for pitchers to perform at their best, they must be well conditioned, both physically and mentally. Part of that preparation is the charting of pitches, recording what the Pirates throw and what the opposition hits. 
In addition, Miller gets information from advanced scout Don Scala. Yes. Well, he's an up the middle hitter most of the time. As you can see here, he's going to go up the middle a lot. And then... Right after batting practice, I'll sit down with tonight's starting catcher and tonight's pitcher. And we'll go through the uh, nine people in the lineup. Once the game begins, both Miller and Jim Leland are in perfect sync, making certain that the pitcher, catcher, and the entire defense work together as a team. We're man on second. They're getting kind of wide out there, and he's kind of okay. slow to the plate. So don't be afraid. You you look for this. Okay. Watch me play. You come set when he breaks you throw. Okay. Anybody? They're all getting kind of crazy out there. I think he's the best. I think the pitchers have total confidence in him, and uh, he's done a great job for us. Did we get it straight, Ray? I think so. I, I hope so.